really believe in the role of sports and the role that sports has um, to kind of drive social change and, and sustainable social, social change. We've seen the impact that we've had uh, in terms of using sports as a catalyst for social change over the last 13 years uh, of, since our inception. And you know, our target uh, when we were uh, founded was to reach 1 million lives and impact 1 million lives of young boys and girls globally. And we've hit that target in August last year. And you know, that's when we realized that we need to expand and continue this legacy. You know, we, we are in a, in a position that you know, we can influence and we can um, uh, kind of create, uh, inspire other you know, host countries to look at legacy as a whole, legacy both locally or also on a global scale, what that means to host the mega sporting events and what other developmental outcomes uh, can be achieved through the sport, mega sporting events. So I think this is where we are right now. Uh, Generation Amazing, again, like I said, is a, is a youth-led uh, you know, and youth-focused uh, uh, foundation. We basically use sports, uh, not just football, but sports generally as a catalyst for social change. We empower youth and we uh, have a lot of engagement opportunities for youth globally um, to have a, a say and sort of, you know, uh, their future. And, and we empower youth and we work closely with uh, various, you know, uh, groups of youth around the world and, and various CBOs and NGOs to kind of ensure that there is a sustainable uh, approach towards, you know, development and looking at also sports and how sports, you know, can can be used as, you know, platforms to create, you know, these sustainable uh, social change. So currently we're in over 30 countries. We've, uh, you know, uh, delivered in, in over, you know, 30 countries. Our programs are, you know, either the Generation Amazing Community Club, the advocacy program, um, or the festivals. Uh, so the festivals is an annual event that we bring youth together to and you're, usually we hold the festivals alongside mega sporting events. Um, but you know we're, we're currently in, uh, in the Middle East, we're in Kuwait, uh, Oman, uh, Jordan as well. We've launched a partnership with the schools and the Ministries of Education to, to roll out football for development drills within the physical education classrooms and also with the Ministry of Education in Qatar. And we work also co very closely with the with Qatar Foundation and, and, the, and the QF schools here. Um, also, on a global scale, what we've done is amazing partnerships. Uh, you know, again, we believe in SDG 17 and leveraging, you know, partnerships. And I think, you know, we all we all believe that you know one hand ca can clap alone, and you know we need to work together. And I think this is where you know our role comes in uh, very nicely is that we've been able to have you know key uh, partnerships that you know we were able to pilot and roll out different uh, programs to see what works and what doesn't work. With, for example, with the International Federation for Red Cross and Red Crescent. We've launched an amazing program that is a pilot program that looks at you know four countries: Iraq, Myanmar, Uganda, and Argentina, and mainly looking at sort of um, creating sort of a non-violent, peaceful uh, society and, and, and cohesive environment for a lot of youth, especially since the pandemic and kind of you know the the disruption with different sort of schools and and, and commun communal events. You know we. Um, used the national societies in, the, in those four countries, whether it's the Red Cross or the Red Crescent, and rolled out a program. We trained coaches on the ground, and they were able to kind of take that program and, and kind of roll it out to, to, to kids and beneficiaries within that community. Um, another amazing partnership that we have is with CONCACAF. CONCACAF is the governing body of football for North America, the Caribbean. And, um, you know, with CONCACAF, we're also developing a hybrid curriculum, looking at, you know, sort of capacity building within uh, grassroots uh, environments within the CONCACAF region. Obviously, there's, you know, within the CONCACAF region, there's a, there's a big divide in terms of the development of football uh, on the technical side. You know, when you compare the U.S., Canada, Mexico to the Caribbean islands, for example, countries like Haiti, really there's a huge disadvantage uh, in Haiti. And there's, you know, political unrest. There's a lot of challenges that Haiti faces. And one of the countries that we're working in is Haiti. And we focus on Haiti because it's probably the most um, vulnerable uh, country within that part of the world. Also, it, it was hit hard by climate change uh, lately with the, with the natural disasters. And so we we're trying to go back into Haiti and support teachers and, and students within, within that, within that you know, community. So I think you know, this is why um, SDG 17 is very critical for Generation Amazing and for us is, is because you know, we believe in these strong alliances and partnerships. So the concept behind the community club is that it's a safe environment, but it's also a, a, a community-led hub for, for that specific community. And what we try to do with the, with the, with the community club is that we uh, design it with the buy-in of the community. Um, because everything we do is based you know, on grassroots kind of relationships and, and we build, you know, kind of a, we have a bottom-up approach. And I think, you know, um, this is why, you know, uh, 
we are sustainable and the way that we program and, and kind of run different activities for you know those communities is because we don't prescribe anything on anyone out of Qatar here. Like we always work with the local community members and the CBOs and NGOs to identify the social issues. And, and based on those social issues, we design uh, interventions and football drills that tackle those issues. So for example, if it's, you know, a community is suffering from uh, gender violence or you know gender inequalities we use football for development interventions to address those specific issues um, where we promote you know gender equality amongst the youth boys girls etc um, and in some other you know in another context in another community it might be uh, drug uh, abuse or addiction issues that we also address through sports and this is why you know generation amazing is really you know we believe that, that, that we have a role and sports is an amazing platform um, to, to basically not just bring people together and kind of you know create that uh, cohesive environment and society but also address social issues and, and societal challenges whether it's climate change whether it's gender equality whether it's um, again uh, uh, obesity uh, uh, you know issues around health and, and well-being as well uh, this year uh, we launched also with the Ministry of Public Health and the WHO a unit on mental health Obviously because you know during the pandemic that was a big issue that we heard a lot from our youth advocates and, and our beneficiaries is that you know there was a big disruption with schools and, and the, all their community events. And so we created the mental health unit because we also saw the role that you know sports has and specifically football um, in terms of you know bringing people together on the pitch, but also for youth to be able to open up and express their uh, opinion and, and their thoughts and talk about difficult things and, and you know uh, hardships that they face. And rather than in a classroom environment or any other environment they feel safe they feel you know they can open up to the coaches and that's what you know the unit that we created with the with WHO and and the Ministry of Public Health of Qatar here is that you know um, it, it, it it's it's a, it's a, it's it trains coaches to identify you know youth that have you know mental health issues and you know we are able to kind of you know flag that uh, at an early stage and you know for the parents and the school to be involved um, so this is a program that you know has been uh, rolled out, and it's uh, it's an open education resources on it's on our e-learning platform online, and this is a legacy also to to the FIFA World Cup Qatar 2022. So I think you know we've had a role in some of the LDC countries over the last couple of years, in Rwanda and Haiti and Afghanistan as well. Like we you know since the beginning the the, the start of the evacuations of the state of Qatar to the Afghan um, citizens, you know we stepped in and supported the Ministry of Foreign Affairs in terms of you know providing you know programming. Uh, 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 within the compound and the, and the, resi the resi residential facility that they were staying in, and I, I you know, we, we saw the role that we had in, in terms of supporting refugees in our own backyard. Obviously, you know, we do a lot of work with refugees in Jordan, Lebanon, other places as well. But for the first time, you know, we had refugees here in Qatar, and you know, that was a huge learning curve for us. Um, you know, we really believe in the role of sports and the role that sports has um, to kind of drive social change and, and sustainable social social change. Um, and you know everything we do like even the work that we do in Rwanda is in partnership with the Ministry of Sports and Youth with local CBOs and GOs and I think this is the you know this is why it's critical to kind of have that um, communal buy-in uh, from these communities and in action it's you know legacy you know for us you know um, it's not an afterthought you know legacy was always part of the beginning of the journey of the World Cup and you know Generation Amazing was part of that journey and, and this is sort of you know uh, we're committed you know we're committed to using you know sports as a tool for social uh, development and social change.